and the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton. The letter affirms, and I quote, that Chinese from Huawei Technologies is bidding to supply equipment to Sprint Nextel, and that lawyers retained by the company are currently working with the Treasury Department to allow it to operate in the United States. The letter continues to state that Huawei's position as a supplier of Sprint Nextel could create substantial risk for the United States companies and possibly undermine U.S. national security. I guess it dawned on some in Washington that we should be concerned if the equipment made by the Chinese companies of Huawei and ZTE were installed across America's cell phone grid, which could secretly be programmed for spying on all Americans. What is curious about this letter is that it never mentions that the Republican governor, Rick Snyder, runs the company financing Neophotonics and that he therefore is the money behind the technology this international partnership of companies may be trying to use to spy on the people of the United States. The basis of the letter comes from the proposal deal in which Sprint Cellular would install equipment from the Chinese companies of Huawei and ZTE on next generation cell phone towers across the United States. In his video, Vince Wade pointed out that in a 2008 press release, Governor Rick Snyder's business partner, Neil Photonics, had noted that Huawei had given them the top award for quality and customer support. Mr. Wade also pointed out that in spring of 2010, another press release by Neil Photonics was published stating that it had achieved core partner status with Huawei. In regards to Mr. Bill Kaufman, Fourteen years ago, in 1997, Dr. Kaufman and his wife were sincerely welcomed to spend 40 days in mainland China. More recently, in October 2006, Dr. Kaufman clearly felt that his concerns about the university practices were being ignored. So he set about using his own international visa to attend China's annual air show in Zhuhao where he intended to do some looking around himself for stolen American aviation and propulsion technology. However, 36 hours before his scheduled departure, Dr. Kaufman was dragged from his U of M office in handcuffs and placed under arrest without a warrant by a University of Michigan campus cop who informed him that we do not want you going to China. Now, he wasn't talking about the campus police when he said we. He was talking instead about University of Michigan President Mary Sue Coleman and her administrative cohorts at the Board of Regents. In that 2006 incident, Dr. Kaufman was threatened, accosted, and taken away to jail. Though now, five years later, Dr. Kaufman has yet to find a proper settlement to his being falsely imprisoned and Mary Sue Coleman has yet to answer for the undermining of all of Dr. Kaufman's data gathering plans. Here we are five years later and Dr. Kaufman is still being ignored. Like others I have spotlighted on my Power Corrupts Again program, Dr. Kaufman has been to Michigan law enforcement and he has appeared before Michigan judges. Yet each time he continues to be dismissed by these so-called public officials who otherwise appear to be consistently acting uh, enterprisingly on behalf of themselves and their cohorts. Of course, I call it racketeering and corruption. And so far, nobody in office will listen to me either. In any event, it should be noted that during World War II, the British newspaper coined a term to describe the types of activities being demonstrated today by this University of Michigan Pre President Coleman, the University of Michigan Board of Regents, the Senator Carl Levin, and by the Michigan Governor Rick Snyder, who is, by the way, an alumnus of University of Michigan. The term long ago was Quisling, named after Norwegian Vidkum Quisling, who assisted Nazi Germany after the Nazis had conquered his own country, so that he could himself become a ruler in the collaborationist Norwegian government. The term historically was most commonly used in reference to fascism, 
and the collaboration between political parties, the military, and the paramilitary forces. Tragically, in today's time, the term might be better used to reference those of the corporate and the government elite who, like World War II traitors, persist in acting treasonously in their own best interest or in the collective interest of private shareholders rather than in the greater interest of we the people of this once great nation. It's people like this who are the subject of this show, the ones who are selling out America to the highest bidder, which in this case of more recent years has been the communist nation of the People's Republic of China. Well, I, I think when uh, uh, Defense Secretary Gates was in uh, uh, China, or when, when he first came back, uh, he made the point that the United States was going to have to restart a lot of weapons programs that they had previously uh, uh, stopped. Uh, because of the advancements in the uh, uh, capabilities of the Chinese military. So when you think about how much money is that going to cost us as, uh, as United States taxpayers, uh, there's going to be billions of dollars trying, trying to uh, uh, keep up with the, uh, with the capabilities of the Chinese military. He also, he also said that, the, uh, um, that their cruise missile technology and their anti-ship ballistic missiles uh, were a threat to our aircraft carriers, and we were going to have to invest billions of dollars in uh, countermeasures for those as well. Well, but, I, and about what, uh, or maybe more than that, about that missile that went off uh, uh, off the coast of California, uh, seemed to be going out of nowhere, and and uh, you know it was in the news, but only <laughs> briefly. Yeah, that happened about four months ago, I think, and. Uh, people say, well, it was an airplane contrail viewed from some strange angle. <clears throat> but when I looked at that contrail, it was clearly the contrail from a rocket because at the end of the contrail, there was a light source, like the nozzles on the rocket. And also, the contrail itself appeared to be smoke and not water vapor. And smoke comes from the combustion solid propellants. So I would choose that it was a, a sea-launched ballistic missile from a Chinese submarine in international waters and they were just shooting it off to show that they could do it. Right. That w we, we can sneak up on you, too, right off the coast, the coast of uh, California. Here. And that happened mm -hmm. right about the same time that we had uh, the, 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 the problems that were going on between North and South Korea, I believe, that uh, we had a battleship that was uh, sent into the Yellow Sea about that time. And this might have been a little message from China to say, you know, also, also, you have to wonder uh, how much the civilian uh, government in China has control over the military, because when Gates was in China recently and they tested the uh, their new uh, J-20 fighter, uh, apparently uh, Hu Jintao didn't even know, uh, know that they were testing it. That's the president, right? That's the president. <laughs> that's the president of their civilian government. So, so the, the control of the military is not. You know, we're not we're not quite sure who is in control of the of the Chinese military. Well, and um, uh, as as we were talking a little bit during that quick break here, I mean, we've got so many things that 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 we don't know about. You know, uh, uh, you know, some of these things here that that uh, are, are being uh, that China is getting privy to. You know, and the American public uh, uh, is is um, it's horrendous. Well, we've we've tried to give some thought to how do you actually you know, come up with solutions. And in terms of the loss of, of technology from universities, uh, one, of, one of the things is that the, the universities, but like, you know, if you take, for example, the University of Michigan, you know, will train their uh, scientists on how to avoid import-export restrictions. And so the University of Michigan uh, uses a loophole that's, that's for what they call uh, uh, fundamental research. So if, you're, if, what you're, if, if what you're discovering can be considered fundamental research, then you don't have to get an import or export permit. But the same technologies that they're calling fundamental research, they're putting patents on, and they're doing startup companies. And so how is that now a fundamental research? So if, if, you, if you think in terms of a solution, the, the, the universities until about, uh, I think, 30 years ago, we're, we're, we're not allowed 
uh, to profit from uh, patenting federally funded research. And then there was the Birch-Dole Act, which then said even if it's federally funded, the universities can own the, 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 pro the, the intellectual property from research that's been federally funded. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and so since then, there's been tremendous emphasis on technology transfer and startup companies and this sort of thing. Universities don't want to give that up. Okay? I think that if you, if you amended the Birch-Dole Act so that you essentially told the university, if, if you're going to call it fundamental research, then you can't patent it. If you plan to patent it, then it's no longer fundamental research. And if you're going to allow it out of the country, then you need to get uh, import-export permits. So that's a relatively concrete step that one could do, would be relatively easy for our federal legislators to do, and, and, and yet you know, uh, would probably be pretty effective at curtailing some of the technology transfer from universities. Dr. Common? Well, I mentioned earlier the detonation wave engine that was being developed in China. And in 1994, an American company that's now owned by <coughs> Pratt & Whitney uh, came and asked us to do research on that area because we had a long history of being able to do research. And the university immediately intervened and asked the company, demanded that the company sign over all patents, royalties, et cetera, all financial returns on an engine that made well to the university. And Adroit Systems, the name of the small company, simply walked away and said, no, we're not going to do that, okay? Because we have our own interest, it's our money that's going to develop it, and therefore we should keep it. But the university was, had its own pecuniary interest and decided mm -hmm. that they would not do that. And that has happened in other situations too, where you know we're talking about developing mi Michigan businesses. There was a self-locking screw fastener firm in Detroit that wanted to place a contract to the University of Michigan. And again, the university says, yes, you have to assign us all rights. And the company just threw up their hands and said, no, we're not going to do it. So that's hardly a friendly environment when you're the state university and supposed to be helping people. I mean, you know, we should think of ourselves as the Ag Extension Service, extending our hand to the people who need help and do it because we are the state university. So the, the University of Michigan is really doing what China's doing to, to the University of Michigan and, and any other corporation that goes over there. They're saying, well, you can open up a business here. Just share all your technology with us. And, and while you're here, then help us to build the factories and you know, all that stuff here. And what the University of Michigan is doing is, is the same thing to businesses here. And, and when the, the businesses don't want to participate, then they're actually stealing it from, from the professors and, um, and other people who are doing the research at the universities. Um, it's even broader than that. Um, we hear now that we're going to create jobs by exporting to China. <clears throat> that's, that's the new White House team. Well, you can look at the past. The past is prologue, or past is history, it's experience. And what do the Chinese do? They say, well, we want to buy a couple of Manitowoc cranes. Okay, so they buy a couple of Manitowoc cranes. And the next thing they say is, well, we need a factory in China to make spare parts for these cranes. Okay, fine, we'll do that. And then the next thing they say, well, we'll buy a couple more cranes, but you have to open up a factory in China that's going to make cranes. And they do that and sell a couple more cranes. And then they come back and Manitowoc goes over to China and says, you want to buy some cranes? No, thanks. We know how to make them on our own. And this has happened a hundred or a thousand times. I mean, how stupid and how greedy is the American government and American corporations? When you talk about creating jobs here, it's not by exporting what we know so they can do it and sell it back. We have to create jobs here in America for Americans. And I'd we have American products in the stores. Okay. If, if, you, if, you, look at, if you look at things like uh, Boeing, you know, who wants to sell aircraft to uh, China, uh, they, make, they make a deal with, uh, uh, with China, but China says, uh, you know, we need an offset, okay? Well, what they mean by an offset is you've got to, as you say, build, you know, build part of the uh, uh, plane in China. And so then they learn how to do it. Now China is turning around and they're trying to, they're trying, they're about to begin to market a, uh, an aircraft, a, a commercial aircraft that would compete with the Airbus and with uh, some of the uh, Boeing aircraft. 
Um, so it, this is happening over and over again. They call them offsets.